Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at Community Report 94 for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. This was published on the 28th of April 2024. And I have to admit, this has caught me a little bit by surprise because it's been some time since the community report was issued. And I kind of was expecting the next one or this one to be an announcement of the game going into full release. Uh, which would have been even a bigger shock than this report. Now, an interesting aspect of this um, community report is that they're actually talking about a DLC, which it, again comes as, as a bit of a surprise because to kind of release a DLC either before the full release or as part of the full release is is a bit unusual. But I can, but having read through the report, I can actually understand the thought process. Anyway, so we'll just get straight in. It says, Greetings, dear comrades of the Soviet Republic and all our fans of the game around the globe. There's been some time since our last report. Um, as we approach the final stage of the development of our focus, we have shifted more towards refinement and preparation for the final release. Consequently, our updates will become less frequent and rest assured our commitment to improving the game continues unabated. Yeah, I mean, I can relate to that sentiment because um, I know from personal experience of delivering software projects that when they're going good, and I think that is the fact they're saying that they're working on refinement and preparation means that is a good indication that it is going good. Software projects can take on the form of a bit like a swan as they, it seems to be just sailing along the surface uh, with serenely and not much going on, but there's a lot going on underneath. But... It's lots and lots of detail work, final polishing, testing, just teasing out some of the bugs that are still there. So, it, and it's difficult to document exactly what's going on or even talk about it in a community report um, without giving too much away. So I can understand why these community reports have now got so big, but I think the statement, the fact that they feel that they're in a refinement and preparation phase gives me a lot more a lot of confidence about how the game is coming together for that final release the, the downside is that if they're in that phase uh, if you follow my channel you'll be aware that i'm trying to get through a unification series as quickly as possible before the update actually drops and i've got a feeling i might be running out of time which could be a bit of a dilemma for me but the other thing about this community report is that it's going to give me some ideas for what I want to do after the game goes into full release. Anyway, I've gone completely off on a tangent, so let's just jump straight in to the next paragraph. It says, in this report, we are excited to share details about an upcoming DLC, which will include realistic maps. This edition will feature approximately 10 new maps, where each meticulously scaled down for gameplay while retaining geographic authenticity. Currently, four of these maps are complete, while the remaining ones are under active development. Now, uh, I think at first glance here, you think, well, why produce a DLC that's going to just produce 10 new maps, which are all going to be populated? But I think the key statement there is it will include realistic maps. So I've got a feeling that there's a bit more to this DLC, but they don't want to let on. But one very wild off the cuff guess I will make is that there might be some scenarios in there. And some of these might actually be tied to these maps. Because they've, they've, they've got, I mean, I'll be completely upfront. I was very impressed by the campaign mode and the potential for scenarios that are given over that. And if you haven't, even if you're an experienced player, if it, it, I will say that it's certainly well worth doing the campaigns, especially the second one. One because even I've got, I've got well over three thousand hours in this game, and that campaign actually taught me a couple of things which I didn't know. But also. I think it just gives you an idea of the potential for scenarios. And again, I'm going off completely on a different tangent. We're going to come back to the, the first picture after I've read the next paragraph. So there's one of the one of the highlighted terrains is East Germany, including a decorative element that may recognise the representation of the Berlin Wall within within Berlin, adding a touch of historical context to the map. Now, if we go back to this, now I know it's going to be a little bit difficult to see, but this is actually I'm assuming Berlin. And if you look at the, the cathedral on the left-hand side here and then got, draw a line between the two cathedral and the one in the background, what you'll see along the edge of the river is a kind of double wall, which rep, which is representing the, the, the actual Berlin Wall. And I think if it goes round and it comes across and it kind of cuts back above those buildings there, and you can see, you can see these little sections of the Berlin Wall in there. I must admit... Uh, 
and I have to be completely upfront, guys. I've been really impressed by the quality of the maps and of, of what's been produced for the campaign mode. And that's replicated into this DLC. It's going to make things very interesting. Now, if we go down to the next one, this is an outline of East Germany, which they've captured quite accurately with Berlin in the center. And I'm not exactly sure. Oh, yeah, the the actual background is down in the bottom right hand corner of the map with a, a river pass. And again, this is something that really struck me from the campaign maps, and it's good to see it's reproduced it. I know from the fact my work with creating a custom map, getting this effect of a river valley and also the depth of the rivers with the embankments is is very time consuming and it requires a lot of detailed work, but it is satisfying when it's actually finished. Yeah. So we'll just look around here. Yeah. I mean, this could be an interesting map to play uh, because you've got the NATO border going round up to there. And of course, you've got the, uh, the Soviet border on the right hand side. We've got, what's it, Berlin, Western East, uh, Potsdam, and then we go down to Leipzig, Erfurt, Mad Magdeburg. Yeah, um, I think that's quite impressive. And then, of course, I think this is, uh, this is Leipzig. And you can see that again, the river system in the background. And I, I and I really like the way the river. So like you get the light on the water here, and I think you can even get the um, with care. We can actually create the effect of the almost more, as though the river is flowing, even though technically it's not. There's also nice features in these maps like the field layout, and I can't see any. I'm looking there. There's also orchards as well. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm wandering off completely in all the wrong direction. It says, our decision to focus on specific regions is influenced by our player base demographics, with Germany leading in sales. Constantly, we've tailored one of our new terrains to this audience. France is another key area we focused on due to the vibrant player community. So this is France. I think what we'll do is we'll look at the map first and then go back to the other picture. Now, this is going to be quite an extensive map because it is covering the whole of France. And it'd be quite interesting the distance between the settlements and also where the resources are. And of course, they've been quite crafty in the sense that they're not showing any of the resources. So that makes it even more interesting from the realistic point of view. Uh, the crossing points. Now, I'm going to kind of look at this very carefully from the perspective of you play realistic mode, because, of course, these will be populated maps. And then, of course, they won't have all the services built into them. And that does cause a dilemma for if you want to do a realistic start, because you've only got limited resources. And, and to try and get all the services into all these um, towns and cities will be quite interesting. Uh, so uh, I think this these maps might be pitched a little bit more towards players who don't play realistic mode. But even, even if you weren't playing realistic mode, you could get... Um, you would take time to build up all the various towns. You'd have to start in possibly, I think... If I was going to start here, I'd start down in the south because you've got four settlements but called there and then work up through the river valleys that way. Um, um, and of course, there's another kind of indirect challenge if you played on one of these maps in realistic mode is whether you could get in and get in all these various towns populated before they actually fell down if you were playing with maintenance mode enabled. So we'll just go back up to this picture here. Uh, I think this this is Paris, yeah. So we got the River Seine coming through. We got probably Notre Dame in there, and then other churches as well. Now this one's not too bad. Now what? Because one of my main concerns is if we go back up to uh, Berlin, would be getting the um, getting the actual services built into here, especially if you were playing with nineteen sixties buildings. Because, of course, when you've got a lot of um, buildings put in like this, getting all the various schools and stuff like that put in will be a bit tricky. Anyway, I'm, again, I'm digressing. So then, so we're going to move down to my, my home country, the United Kingdom, home of a large contingent of our players. We'll also see its own dedicated map, ensuring our fans will feel um, right at home. This first one is London. I don't think the Thames is quite that um, deep, but I do like that feature. And I think this is something that you do need to have is a little bit of poetic license when you're putting these maps together. Um, you can't be totally historically accurate or geographically accurate, actually, is the correct term. But then again, that's not the point of, of the exercise. Uh, here, 
Uh, if you actually look in the bottom right hand side of this map, you can actually see where there's a potential possibly for two custom sheds, one NATO, one Soviet and the bottom right hand corner. But what I get a feel from this UK map is probably this is the type of island start that could be quite fun to actually um, put together. And I suppose from a personal perspective, I mean, I live down in the southwest or towards the southwest. I don't live actually in Cornwall, but I live down in a kind of, if you draw down, go west from London, I live down in this area. It's interesting there's no actual uh, a town there, but I could actually... I mean, if I played this map, I'd be very tempted to kind of build my a town down here, right around roughly where I actually live. <laughs> but you've got London, Liverpool, Manchester, Nottingham. And I think also if you look on the left-hand side here, you'll see the, the kind of complexity of the scale because you've got London or you've got Liverpool there and you've got Manchester in the background there. Now, um, that is a relatively short distance in gameplay. But of course, in reality, although Liverpool, Manchester and Leeds are close together, um, they're not really, I mean, that'd be quite interesting to build a, a kind of urban conurbation through there. And of course, the other factor would be is whether there's, uh, where the resources are. And then, so I'm just going to move down again. It says, however, that we're not just focusing on large countries. Our aim is to include terrains from a variety of regions, not limited to post-communist countries. We're exploring diverse landscapes that we believe will intrigue a wide range of players. Our list includes the USA, parts of Russia, potentially Kaliningrad. Now, Kaliningrad could be fun. Uh, that's the Russian enclave up on the Baltic. Uh, we've got Poland and others, and others still under discussion. I think this is where the real potential is. is come, And I think this could go back to possibility of scenarios where you could um, put something together that would fit quite well. Uh, what we got here, uh, Verona, I'm trying to look to see if I can get any place names. So I'm not seeing any here. I'm not, um, actually, this is Talon here. So that would be, uh, apologies, I can't remember the capitals of the Baltic states. But I'd say that this is actually on the Baltic state. This is quite a nice map, actually. And what I do like about this one is coming back to the point I made about putting in the utilities is that there have been spaces left to fit in schools and all that so you wouldn't have to go on a rampant demolition of the various towns it's also interesting that you've got a lot more cathedrals on here so you could actually play with religion uh, as well and i think we go here yeah this is talon this is one of the baltic states in fact uh i'm going to take a very wild guess correct me if i'm wrong here um I think this is Estonia. Uh, is it Estonia's got talent? Because the, what I'm going on is the fact that this is the top of the Baltic, and I'm sure Estonia is the one closest to Finland. I mean, feel free to correct me if I've got it wrong, and I apologise if anyone lives in Estonia if I've I accidentally um, attributed you a wrong capital. Again, this could be quite an interesting map to play because you've only got a very small NATO enclave on the, which would re require ships, and then you've got a couple of good connections here. Um, in fact, this is of all the maps actually, this is the one that's intriguing me the most. Um, there's lots of small communities which you could join up. Yeah, I think this, from a realistic player gameplay perspective, this could be fun being able to try and populate this whole map because it's not big it's fairly compact because there's large parts that are actually outside the perimeter um and, and yeah it could be quite fun to kind of just try and join all this up because i'm assuming looking at this it looks like there's there could be an established rail network there as well which would be very useful if you're say playing in a non-realistic mode because you could actually try and build up this entire map um with um you buy auto purchasing so right so what i'm going to do now is just do the outro our work continues while we scale back on the frequency of our reports while promising to keep you informed of our meaningful updates as we as they arise we will share with news we're discussing especially those with significantly enhanced gameplay as we conclude this report remember to take joy in the life in gaming stay tuned to our next updates thank you for your continued support so yes a very interesting report it's actually given me a few ideas um, about maybe something that would go forward. Now, I know that 
releasing a DLC that may consist mainly of maps. I will go back to saying that there is a hint that there'll be something else in in the in it as well. And I know a lot of players um, players in, of all different games don't like DLC, but what I will say is I will buy this DLC because I am intrigued by the map, especially this bottom one. And I'm already starting to think a possibility of a series where we may not play realistic mode, but it could be a fun series. And I'm kind of thinking that maybe a series where we we don't play strict realistic mode, and the, and the idea will be is to try and build the com economy up and get everything working as a fully working community. Because of course, the advantage of of something a compact map like this is that because you don't have to build all the buildings, you can probably progress quite quickly. So that could be a fun series to do, but I'll think more about it. Anyway, this is where I'm going to leave it. hope you enjoyed the video. hope you found it interesting. Any comments, opinions, feelings about a DLC, feel free to chuck it in the video description and we'll have a chat. But until next time, whatever you do, enjoy your gaming.